Hi everyone, my name is Nigel Andrew. I'm currently the chair of the Holsworth Wildlife Research Endowment Committee that's run through the ESA. And today I thought I'd take you through some of the, the key aspects of writing an application, particularly for um, new applicants. So I'm just going to go through um, some key tips here as well and to identify what you should be looking out for when you're applying for the grant. So first things first, before you start, make sure you read the guidelines. Have a look at the website, because all the information you need is there. If you're in any doubt, read the guidelines. Um, also, before you start filling in the application, make sure you look at the form on the website. It is a web-based form, but there are also some PDFs that you need to include in it as well. So it's good to have an idea of what, what you need to include and where it needs to go before you start filling in the application itself. And like all good things, prepare early. Don't leave it till the last week to get into it. Give yourself a few weeks, ideally a month, um, to get going with the application. So this is what the website looks like. Uh, it's basically, it's in the ESA's um, sort of web portal area and it goes through some of the key things to look at. So the guidelines are there and it's all web-based, so it should be easy to navigate um, once you've found it. One of the key things to keep in mind when you are writing your grants is to, to I don't know what the philosophy behind the grants are. So there's three key aspects to the Holsworth grants and you might, you should fall under either one or multiple of these philosophies. And these are the things you should be writing to or thinking about when you are writing your grant. So firstly, you need to be doing field work on Australian native plants or animals to gain an understanding of the ecological interactions, population dynamics, animal behaviour and species distribution. Um, the second philosophy is conservation biology and biodiversity studies relating to the management of protected areas and rare or threatened species in Australia. And thirdly, wildlife management relating to sport hunting, harvesting, pest control management of non-game animals and effective land management on native species. So these are things that you should have in mind when you are writing your grant up and actually identifying key things that you want to um, budget for. And again, I can't say it enough, read the guidelines that are available to you. Be prepared early and giving yourself enough time to draft and revise. Don't submit your first draft. Make sure it's been read, ideally by a colleague, someone that you can trust, someone who can have a look at one of the, the earlier drafts and make sure it makes sense and make sure that you are putting together a convincing argument. And also make sure your supervisor reads it. Your supervisor needs to know you're submitting one of these through the university and they should be assisting you um, developing these grants um, or a senior research mentor. These are really important people to have on board when you're putting together any sort of grant, but particularly one of these grants for the, the Holsworth grants. For many of you, it might be the first grant you've applied for. So it's really important to get feedback as you're going through the process. And again, make sure you focus on one of those key aspects or the philosophy of the Holsworth grant when you are drafting your application. The application is a web submission, as I said before, but there are three documents you need to upload to it. So the templates are provided on the, on the, on the website. So they're the project, project details template, the budget template, and also submission and approval and certification that needs to be filled in by your research office um, when you submit. So this is what the, the, the application, the um, submission website looks like. So it's up the top, it tells you what you're doing. And also it says, again, here, make sure you read the application guidelines. Can I say it again? Read the application guidelines. And also make sure you download the, the templates here. They're in Word and the project details and submission application forms are Word documents. And the budget template is an Excel spreadsheet. And when it says for surname, first name, when you go to save these and upload them, make sure you include your surname, where it says surname, and your first name. So for example, my, if I submitted one, it would be Andrew underscore Nigel Holsworth Project Details. 
it's really important to, to change those to make them relevant to your, your own application. The application itself, again, is an online form. So most of this is um, you just fill in the information as you go through. So again, it's good to look at this before you submit, just so you know what you're getting yourself in for. It doesn't, once you've got all your PDFs and all your information together, it shouldn't take a long time. There might be some information about um, phone numbers of the research office that you need to, to need to also get in prior, but make sure it's, it, all of it is fairly, uh, fairly straightforward in terms of the, um, the submission process. Again, make sure, so up here where it says surname, first name, make sure you do save as, save as your surname and save as your first name, just so when it comes to being assessed, instead of the assessors seeing 10 um, documents of the same, with the same generic name, they know who they're assessing. So in terms of the, the application um, itself, particularly with the project, make sure you firstly, when you open up the Word document, um, you put in the, the year and the round, because sometimes if, you, if people have previously applied and they've missed out, you can reapply again. But you've got to make sure that your the specific year and round is identified um, um, first case, just to make sure we're not doubling up on applications. The project summary is it's an, it's, it's an, called an executive summary. It's a repeat of the executive summary used on the online form. But it's easier, obviously easier to work in, in a Word document where you can format a bit more and then just cut and paste into the, um, the, the online film. Make sure that you, it's 300 words maximum. So there is a maximum word count here and things to include uh, background, you know, simple background, get into it really quickly. Why is your research important? Why is it interesting? Um, if you just say it hasn't been studied before, there's not been studied before, it's not a strong reason. What are your questions? What are you trying to answer? This is also for your overall PhD, but also specifically for your Holdsworth grant and specifically for the year you're being funded for. We, we understand that you know, your project, PhD project is probably bigger than what you're asking for for the Holdsworth. So make it clear how the Holdsworth grant fits into your PhD project. What's the methodology? What specific approaches or models will be using, um, particularly for the year you're applying for funding? And also what are the outcomes for the year of funding? What will you achieve in that year once you've done your field work and, what, and, and the collections you make based if, if you are successful in getting funding? And what are you expected to achieve in the year you're funded? This is very different to what you want to achieve from your entire PhD. So make it explicit about what you're achieving over the 12 month period that you're, you're asking for the funds. And also what your anticipated outcomes for your PhD are. So that's the going back to the broad area. So again, you only got 300 words here. So you have to be very succinct and very specific in what you're, you're um, wanting to put forward as your argument for your summary. For your background, one page max, again, keep to the limits. You are provided a template. So use that template and make sure your information fits within it. And you're writing here to ecologists. So people who should know what you're talking about, but they're not experts in your field. So make sure you do use, um, you know, you, you can use technical language, but make sure you explain it. If you're using jargon, you know, in, people might not understand it and then you might not be getting your point across. So keep the language to a knowledgeable audience, but not a discipline specific audience. So put your research into context. Um, again, for someone who's not an expert in your research, field of research, keep the background relevant to the area of research. You don't have to go too, too broad. You know, if you're doing climate change research, you don't have to go and just trying to tell people how important it is to understand the threats of climate change or the threats of, you know, um, sort of land degradation, be very explicit and get to the point uh, relatively quickly. Identify the key research findings up to this point and also the key gaps in your research field. And specifically, what is your key aim? What are your questions and what are your hypotheses for your PhD? 
and also identify why the methods you're using are appropriate here. Um, you know, have they been used previously or are they novel? And if they're novel, how do you know they're going to work? And also write in paragraph form. Don't write in dot points. We want to make sure you can string a sentence together and you can put a coherent argument together. And this is best done using paragraphs. The description can take up three pages. So this is where the bulk of the, inf the, the information will be. So what are you doing for your PhD? Again, key questions or expectations here, more broad methodologies. And also then what are you doing in the year that you're asking for funds? What are your key questions and specific methodologies here? So again, a bit of this is a, um, an overlap from the questions you identify in the background, but it's putting, into the, putting them into the context of your methods. Include a timeline here, when things are going to happen, and also over, over you know, this is potentially looking at over the three years of potential funding here. In terms of your budget, this should all, these budgets should relate back to your questions and to your timeline as well. So you, here you've got the three years identified. As new applicants, you'll be, the, the key one obviously is the requested funding year, but you're also asked to put in predicted funds for year two and year three. And they're under different um, titles here. So you have travel, we specifically identified you know, international conferences, which are only available in uh, year three. Um, for this, you're allowed a, a maximum of $2,000 in the third year. For Australian conferences, you can ask for up to $500 per year. Um, then there are field, also travel here might be travel to field sites, field research costs. If there's any, you know, if there's costs specifically for doing research at field, also lab research costs. Now this is based on costs explicitly related to your field work. Okay, the Holsworth grant is primarily there to assist in helping field research. So any research, lab research costs need to be related to data you've collected um, doing field work. If there's any equipment you need or maintenance of that equipment um, over time. And also if you need to um, sort of employ personnel, like if you need to get a field assistant or an intern to help you out in the field, also identified here. For the budget, make sure that each item requested is relevant and it feeds back to your question and to your methodology. Vehicle costs, again, everything in your budget needs to be explicit. Don't round up to make it just fit. You know, if you say, oh, Holsworth gives out $7,500 a year maximum, don't just round the budget to fit that. Make sure you ask for explicit values. So if you say travel, don't just put in $4,000 and say nothing about it. Explicitly say where you're going, how many kilometres that is, how many trips you'll do in the year, and also the, the, the costs of, you know, for example, in hiring a four wheel drive through the institution. These things make it clear that you've put a bit of effort into thinking about how much it's going to cost and you know, it's budgeted appropriately. These costs may change over time, we understand that, but you should be putting a budget together based on the costs at the time of submission. Again, similar with conferences, don't just say you're going to go to a domestic conference and it's going to cost a lot. Remember, you need to, if um, you also need to, um, if, you, if you just say you're going to go to a domestic conference and you're asking for $2,000, you won't get it from Holsworth because the maximum you can ask for per year is $500. But obviously conf going to a conference costs more than that. So you should also identify where the extra funds will come from and also, if you're after $2,000, what is that going towards? Is it going towards the uh, registration costs, the accommodation costs, or the, um, the flight, or the, the, the travel costs to that particular um, yeah, uh, conference venue? International conferences, again, only if it can be requested in the final year. You need to be explicit where you, you think you're going to go. Again, you don't, we don't know, what, you don't know where you're going to go, but be explicit. And also, if you don't know exactly where it is, you just put to VA and get some general costs about where you're going. And also include here you know, potential registration costs based on the current year and also flight and accommodation costs, just to give an idea about the overall sort of, yeah, um, if it's a costly or cheaper uh, conference to go to. 
In terms of budgeting, when you are asking for equipment, make sure you are, you are asking for equipment that is specific to your project. Don't ask for um, a bit of equipment that might be really useful for your lab. So, you know, four or five individuals can use in your lab. That's unacceptable. That should be equipment that your university or your supervisor should provide for you. It should be equipment that is specific to your project and you will use um, for the entirety throughout the project's lifetime. Make sure when you're doing your budget, you save it as a PDF. Um, the key thing here is when you do save it, you can save with narrow margins and ideally we'll make it one page width so you can, we can see all the items and when you request them through the year. One, if you just save your budget, your Excel spreadsheet as is, the, the budget width goes over two pages and it's really difficult to follow through. So one of the things when you do save it as a PDF, go to the checkbox that says one page width and save it like that. Make sure you do add other sources that you know um, of funding you, you know you'll be getting. That obviously, you know, the, the university should be giving you funding for the work you do. Um, make sure you know how much that is and what you can spend it on. Also, if you've got industry funding or if your supervisor has a grant like an ARC Discovery or, or DECRA, is, you know, is there part of that funding that goes into your project? We're not, we, we want to make sure that you're, you, know, you do, the money you request is relevant to the other money available to you. So please make that clear. Fieldwork costs are a priority for the Holdsworth Fund to, um, to, to, um, to, to yeah, give funding towards. So if you are, if you do have multiple, if you have lab-based costs and field-based costs, the Holdsworth has a priority to fund field work. So make sure you take that into account when you're doing your budget. The lab costs and kits that you might need to use, you can put those into your budget, but make sure they have a direct relationship to the data you have collected um, previously, um, from a previous year or from a previous you know, um, field trip. So this is an example of a budget. Um, so again, what we've got here is what you're asking for, year one, year two and year three, again, all on one page and identifying in each line what you want. So travel, there's field trips. So we say here, um, we know exactly you know, how many kilometers, how many trips and what costs it is per kilometer. And we've identified that, that's a, you know, that, that request is appropriate for Holdsworth. Um, for international conferences, you can see they're blank in year one and year two, but in year three, there's $2,000 asked for from the Holdsworth and there's an extra amount from other grant funds. And this is because you know, it obviously costs more than $2,000 to get to the international conference. This one would be um, getting, you know, getting over $5,000 and that, that, that's the normal cost for international travel if we're about able to do it. And then the cost for society, so the Ecological Society of Australia, you know, $500 is given out by the, the Holdsworth, but you still have to, you know, have to put into account here what the registration costs will be. If you, they're not known for this year, look at last year's amount and you can use that as a guide. But also airfares, get a quote, you know, just get an online quote for airfares and, and accommodation costs. That again, shows you how much it is and make it explicit. $500 max from Holdsworth and the rest made up from either potentially your university or other sources. Uh, Fieldwork research costs, for example, you might need to buy a kit. So you put them in here, what it is you're buying, how many they are and how much they cost each. If you're doing lab costs, you know, if you need a DNA kit, make sure you identify what you, you, your, your, you need, how many of the kits you need and how much they cost per kit and put the total into the budget. Um, you may might find a whole range of different specimen jars or other aspects of equipment that you might need for your field work is fine. And if you need to employ someone, if you need field, field assistance, um, you know, even though you might not be asking Holdsworth for this, it is just still important to actually identify it in the, in the cost of the budget, because this, again, it shows you've been thinking about it. It's, you know, if your university requests you need someone to help in the field, or if you need help yourself, um, you don't want to go out in the field with yourself, make sure you budget for it because it's important to identify. The other thing that's important to do is um, also 
get confirmation from your research office that you can submit this through them. And so this usually can take a week or two. So make sure you, you do find out if you're in the research office you need to contact um, and make sure that they sign this and send it back to you. And this is put up as a PDF on, in the online form. It's really important to do this because the contract that if you are successful with your Holdsworth grant, the contract of funding is between ESA and the university. The money doesn't go directly to you. Okay, so it's a, it effectively comes out as a contract. So the, the, the research office needs to know that there might be money coming, coming to them. And this also makes sure that it's, you know, what you're putting forward is officially allowed by the university. One other thing you need to submit is your academic record. Now, it's like an academic CV, but specifically for, to highlight your research expertise, but also um, you know, what you've, you've done throughout your time as an undergrad, but also in your honours or, or master's degrees. So you're selling your skill set. You're not just giving a transcript of, you know, if you got a credit or distinction in your second and third year, or you, know, you, you, know, you might have just passed um, Maths 101 and Chemistry 104 in first year. That's not what it's about. It's actually to highlight your main achievements and your skill sets, to really identify your abilities as an emerging researcher. And from this also includes statements on your research philosophy, is to really sell yourself as a researcher and to enable the assessors to get a feeling for, for you, know, you as a researcher, where you're heading, what trajectory you've been on and where you're, you're going to. Um, also, if you've had a research history, you know, if it's been paid or unpaid and also identify the skills you've learned um, in sort of your third or year or fourth year as an undergrad, but also your honours and masters that you still use and are relevant to the, the Holdsworth project that you're proposing. They're really important things to put into your academic record here. And don't just see it as a sort of um, yeah, a transcript um, because that doesn't do well in terms of highlighting your, your expertise. Uh, so generally at the moment, you know, 30 to 50% of grants are getting funded um, through the Holdsworth. So it is a competitive grant system. If you are not um, successful in one round, you can reapply for the next round. So don't feel like you, you, you missed out completely. We generally don't give feedback because we have so many people applying for these, but it can be really useful to reassess your application and also look at the guidelines for the examiners. I'll be doing a um, sort of talk about for the examiners on this, so it can be really useful to actually listen to that as well to find out what we're asking the examiners to look for. Usually, at the moment, the 80 to 90 percent of the funds are given. So even if you ask, if you ask for seven and a half thousand dollars, in many cases you won't actually get that because we are um, constrained by the the amount of funds that are available through the um, the Holdsworth endowment but we're also trying to support as many students as we can and give them a substantive amount. So that's also, that changes, but it's also be aware of that, that you don't necessarily get all the money you uh, have asked for. The, the assessments are done by ecologists. They're people who are currently active in the field, but then don't, won't necessarily be the specialists in your discipline area. So make sure you do write um, to a broad audience. They can also include supervisors of previous award winners, but also previous award winners themselves. So that's to take into account, you get people at a whole range of different stages throughout their research careers. They can be in academia, but they also can be in private practice, in consultancy, or also working in other agencies, but they're still keen to help out um, to provide sort of assistance with the, the Holdsworth grant. And the other thing to make aware, be aware of is even if you are, you do find out you're successful with your grant, don't, don't go and spend the money before the contract is actually signed between SA and the university. The contract isn't with you and it is with the university. So the university needs to be happy to take the money and also ESA needs to give them the money before it's available. Um, so just be really careful about you feel successful, that's wonderful, but you do need to be aware that there is still a contract that needs to be signed 
that is um, yeah, independent of, of you. So just be, be really aware of that. And as I said before, good luck with your applications. Um, it, is, you know, it is competitive, but it's also a really good experience to apply for grants throughout your PhD. And I wish you all your best in your applications and also with your, your PhD research. Bye now.